Have you ever stood next to a machine weighing nearly two tons, oil seeping out like sweat on steel skin? Yet when you open the throttle, its sound screams like an F1 race car. I have. And that feeling, once you've heard it, is something you never forget. They call it the buzzing dozen. Detroit Diesel 12 to 71. A machine born not to please anyone, not to be clean, and certainly not to be quiet. It exists for one reason and one reason only, to work and to work without stopping. Today, I want to take you to a completely opposite extreme, a two-stroke legend where diesel fuel is not just energy, but the substance that creates the purest mechanical music of industrial America. When I talk about the 12V71, I always return to its point of origin because you cannot understand this massive V12 if you ignore the Series 71 line, the foundation that shaped Detroit's entire diesel philosophy for nearly half a century. In the late 1930s, America began to clearly feel the breath of war. Detroit Diesel, still part of the vast ecosystem of General Motors at the time, needed an entirely new kind of diesel engine. It had to be compact enough to fit on ships, strong enough to pull heavy loads, simple enough to be repaired at the front lines, and durable enough to run continuously under conditions no human could endure. The answer appeared in 1938 under a name that sounded dry but brutally honest, Series 71. The first version was an inline six-cylinder engine known as the 671. From the very beginning, I could see in this engine a distinctly Detroit way of thinking. No frills, no showmanship, just absolute focus on practicality. The naming of the Series 71 reflects that mindset perfectly. The number 71 is not a mysterious code or a marketing trick. It simply represents the displacement of each cylinder, 71 cubic inches. So when you hear 6-71, you are talking about six cylinders, each 71 cubic inches, for a total displacement of 426 cubic inches. When the cylinder count increases, the displacement is simply multiplied using the same formula. Everything is clear, logical, and requires no further explanation. What matters even more is that Detroit Diesel barely changed that basic building block for decades. The cylinder bore was kept at four and one quarter inches, and the piston stroke at five inches. I have seen pistons and liners from engines built before World War II, then compared them to later machines, and the feeling is strange, as if time had passed, but the design itself never needed to apologize for it. For Detroit, if something was right, they saw no reason to change it. It was precisely this standardization that turned the Series 71 into a machine of war. During World War II, they were installed in landing craft, tugboats, field generators, and countless other logistical vehicles. When American troops set foot on the shores of Europe or the Pacific, behind them was an entire diesel-powered system. And in many places within that system, you could hear the steady beat of a Series 71 engine at work. From that harsh environment, the Series 71 built its greatest strength, near absolute reliability, but it also carried a famous weakness, oil leaks. Mechanics of the time had a joke I still hear today. If a Detroit doesn't leak oil, it means it's out of oil. Strangely enough, that acceptance became part of the engine's character. People didn't try to make it clean. They simply made sure it always had enough oil to keep living. Then there was the noise. If you stand next to a working Detroit 71, you don't need to look at the tachometer. Its sound is loud enough to fill the space, 
sharp enough to cut through the steel hull of a ship or the frame of a truck. As peacetime arrived, the Series 71 did not disappear. It followed long-haul trucks, ports, construction sites, and power plants. By the late 1950s, Detroit Diesel began shifting from inline configurations to V layouts, creating the 6 V71 and 8 V71, making the engines more compact and more flexible to install. This was a necessary evolution to adapt to a changing world. By the end of the 20th century, emission standards began to tighten, and the two-stroke philosophy, loud, smoky, and fuel-hungry, gradually became a liability. In the early 1990s, Detroit Diesel introduced the Detroit Diesel Series 60, a modern four-stroke diesel engine that was cleaner, quieter, and more efficient. That was the clearest sign that the Series 71 was approaching its end. And it was on that reputation that Detroit Diesel was able to create something bigger, heavier, and with even more character. The 12 V71, the central figure of this story. It is the point where pure engineering meets the very real emotion of the people who work with machines. Within the entire 71 series family, this is the engine I have always held in the highest respect. The first reason is very simple, but only mechanics truly understand its value. The 12 V71 is the largest series 71 engine that still uses a single cylinder head for each bank of cylinders. That means each bank of six cylinders shares one long cylinder head. To me, this is the mark of an old philosophy. Fewer parts, fewer ceiling surfaces, and fewer things that can go wrong. When you've had to retalk dozens of head bolts inside a cramped engine room, you understand why this detail matters. Compared to its bigger sibling, the 16V71, the difference becomes even clearer. The 16V71 has a displacement of about 18.6 liters, or 1,136 cubic inches, a true monster. But in return, it is more complex, longer, heavier, and not always the practical choice. The 12V71, with roughly 14 liters, or 852 cubic inches of displacement, sits right at the balance point. It is big enough to pull the heavy loads demanded by trucks and marine applications, yet still compact enough for mechanics to live with it every day. In terms of performance, numbers don't fully capture the feeling, but they help paint the picture. The naturally aspirated 12 V71 produces around 456 horsepower and nearly 1,200 pound-feet of torque. In turbocharged form, those figures climb to 525 horsepower and about 1,450 pound-feet. The weight of the 12 V71 is also part of its personality. Depending on configuration, it weighs between 3,200 and 3,500 pounds, roughly 1.4 to 1.6 tons. I've joked before that when you install a 12 volt 71 into a truck frame or a ship's engine room, you're not just mounting an engine, you're placing an entire block of mechanical inertia. Many people confuse the 12 V71 with the 12 V92, but to me, they are two completely different personalities. The 12 V92 uses two separate cylinder heads, representing a newer engineering mindset with higher output, but also greater complexity. The 12 V71, on the other hand, carries the old spirit, faithful to Detroit Diesel's original philosophy. Next, I want to pause at the part many people misunderstand the most the two-stroke mechanism. This is not a technical party trick, but the very foundation that allows this engine to exist at all. If you don't understand it, you will either adjust it wrong 
and pay the price in smoke, heat, and the sound of metal knocking. In the 12V71, the piston's upward movement is the compression phase, and the downward movement is the power stroke. It sounds simple, but the key lies in how air enters and leaves the cylinder. There are no intake valves like in a four-stroke engine. Instead, Detroit uses intake ports machined directly into the cylinder wall. When the piston moves down near bottom dead center, these ports open, allowing fresh air to rush in and push exhaust gases out through the exhaust valves in the cylinder head. This process is called scavenging, and if it isn't done correctly, the engine simply cannot live. That is why the roots type blower on the 12V71 is not there to boost performance like a supercharger on a race car. To me, it is more like an artificial lung. Without the blower, the engine cannot breathe, and if it cannot breathe, it cannot fire. I've met newcomers who thought removing the blower would save power, and the result was exactly what you'd expect. Detroit does not tolerate that kind of naivete. In terms of durability, the 12V71 carries the true DNA of the Series 71. The block is thick, the crankshaft is massive, and most importantly, it uses replaceable cylinder liners. For a mechanic, this is a gift. When a cylinder wears out, you don't scrap the entire block. You pull the liner, install a new one, and the machine continues its life. That is how Americans designed engines for war and heavy industry. Fix it, don't throw it away. One detail I have always valued highly on the 12V71 is its very long piston skirt. Compared to many engines of the same era, so-called fuel pinches that tried to save every drop of fuel by shortening the piston, Detroit went in the opposite direction. The long piston skirt keeps the piston stable in the bore, reduces abnormal wear, and withstands sustained heavy loads. It is not optimized for theoretical efficiency, but it is optimized for real-world longevity. And to me, that is the choice of someone who has seen an engine die in the middle of a shift. Of course, nothing comes for free, the two-stroke design, the mandatory blower, and the old-style fuel injection made it difficult for the 12V71 to meet modern emissions standards. Smoke, noise, and high fuel consumption were no longer acceptable to environmental regulations. By 1995, this era officially came to a close. Not because the 12V71 was weak, but because the world around it had changed. But the sound of the 12V71 is truly something special. So much so that people gave it a name of its own, the Buzzing Dozen. The reason is very simple. Because it is a two-stroke diesel engine, every rotation of the crankshaft produces a power stroke. The sound is therefore denser and more urgent, creating the impression that the tachometer needle is racing upward even though in reality, the 12V71 rarely exceeds 2,500 to 2,800 revolutions per minute. On long-haul interstate trucks, where drivers listen to the engine for hundreds of miles, deep in marine engine rooms, where the roar echoes through thick steel and salt water, in standby power plants, where the 12 volt 71 wakes up in the middle of the night and pulls an entire area out of darkness. Wherever there is heavy load and an unrelenting demand for work, there is a place for the buzzing dozen. Today, the world is different. Engines are cleaner, quieter, and more efficient. But because of that, they also have less personality. I rarely hear a modern engine that makes people stop just to listen. With the 12V71, its sound doesn't merely tell you the engine is running. It tells you that an era has not yet agreed 
to be silent. For me, the greatest legacy of the Detroit Diesel 12 V71 is not found in how many were built or the year it was phased out. It lies here. Even today, the moment you hear that buzz ring out, you know immediately industrial America of another era is still breathing. If you've ever heard it, stood next to it, or lived alongside machines like this, share your story. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep revisiting the mechanical legends that defined an era. See you next time.